Welcome to Business Growth Accelerator. Simple strategies for serious business owners who are wanting solid results. And I'll tell you what, I keep seeing this all the time at present. Small businesses are calling it quits in record numbers. And we're having prospective clients uh, coming in and talking with us. They're just about at the back door and they're asking us, or Janela, what can we do to help them? And, you know, it's so frustrating because I can see just the anxiousness uh, in their uh, their demeanor. I can hear the anxiousness in their voice. You know, I can see what it's doing to them. They've had sleepless nights before they've uh, come to us. My my first question I I really want to ask, but I don't, is why didn't you come to us sooner? Why have you tried to do it all by yourself for so long? Because it's not only impacting on them, it's impacting on their family. It's impacting on the money for their kids, um, putting food on the table, uh, schools uh, fees for the kids, uh, just being able to do things. It's impacting on their friends, the family, their peers. There's all these uh, ramifications. It's affecting their health when their business goes bust. It's just affecting so many areas of their life. And it could be fixed if they had actually taken some advice, taken some guidance a lot sooner than trying to do it by themselves. And I'm going to bang on again. And I'm going to ask you, because you're all a a nation of football fans. So may I ask you, why do the Chelsea's, why do the Liverpool's, the Manchester United's, all right, um, Derby County's just gone into administration, all right, but why do, is it that all these big league clubs have coaches and managers for their players? Because these are elite players. They're at the top of their level, yet they still have coaches and managers. So if it's good enough for these football players at the elite level, at the top of their game, to have coaches and managers, how come we don't have coaches or managers to help us and guide us in business? Now, I heard someone say the other day, and it fascinated me, that you don't need a coach, you don't need a mentor to do something that you should be doing yourself. Now, that's just a crazy statement for the simple fact that if you knew how to do it, you would have done it already. But many business owners, they know what they need to do, they know why they need to do it, they just don't know how to do it. And here's the thing about it, when you know how to do it, you can actually go really well in business. And I think there's just four things that you need in business to get it going. All right, to, uh, four things to get leverage. Let me write these down for you. Let's just go to this whiteboard. So there's four areas in your business that will really help you. Let me just, uh, I'll take this away as well. And let's just go back to that one there. Cool. So the first one. Systems and technology. Systems and technology. When you have a system in your business, and remember that system stands for saving yourself stress, time, energy, and money. So when you have a system, the business is going to operate with you without you having to be there all the time. And technology these days allows you to actually implement stuff and ensure that things can be done a week, two weeks, three weeks in advance. The difficulty, though, with systems and technology is that when it works, it's great. When you have a glitch in the system, what do you do then? You Then you have to redo your process to ensure that. Because I'm having an issue at present because I bought something online. They only sent me half of it. And it's taken me six weeks to get back to, uh, or for them, to get the, uh, the stuff to me. And I wrote them an email and I said to them, this email is not to uh, throw bouquets, but neither is it to throw uh, um bouquets and also not to throw brickbats. How good is the service of your customer service? And I outline what actually happened. I've got a re- really nice reply from them today and they're going to sort it. So systems and technology. De- next one, delivery. Delivery and distribution. And distribution. How good... And I'll tell you what, at present, I understand that the uh, supply chain issues are making this really, really difficult. So the question is, how good is your delivery and your distribution to your clients? And you need to measure this, test and measure it, because if, for example, um, you're only getting your your items out 60% of the time, 
That's only two thirds. You're letting yourself down a 30%, a third of the time where your customers are expecting something. So this is where your technology and your systemization comes in. That If there's an issue with your delivery and distribution, you need to get onto your clients and let them know immediately so they are not let down. So they have an expectation of when it may arrive. All right. The next one. The next one. All right. Accounting. Accounting. And test and measure. Now I'm going to put something in red here. I'm going to put three letters here. And they are KYN. So in accounting, know your numbers. When you know your numbers in business, you know what you can afford, you know what you can't afford, you know when you can buy something, you know what the costs are, and the income and the outgoings. Incredibly important. And when it comes to testing and measuring, are you testing and measuring your delivery and distribution, your systems? Because let's face it, if um, you gave me a pound and I gave you a pound 10 back, how often would you do that? That's right, all the time, every day, as soon as you could get more. However, if you gave me a pound and I gave you 90p back, how many times would you do that? Of course, once, once, of course you would. But the thing is, many uh, business owners, and especially in their marketing, actually continue to market and spend money because they're not testing and measuring the return on investment they're getting. And if they realized how much money is going out, they would stop doing it. So it's really important that you know your numbers, that you're in your business, know your numbers, and testing and measuring. The last one, the last one, really important. People and education. People and education. So the question is, how are you looking after your staff? What are you doing to train them? How did you induct them? Were they given a great 90-day induction? Once you've done the induction, how are you educating them? How are you training them? Also ask them, what are they doing to educate and train themselves? Because it's not all on you as the business owner. Now, there are just the four areas that you can really leverage your business and ensure that you're not going to go where these people are going to. All right, and it's I don't want you to go there because it's an awful, awful place to be. I've seen so many business owners recently who are crying out for help, but they've left it too late. They fell into the pothole and they can't drag themselves out of it to dust themselves off. If you're in that situation, please reach out for help. Go and talk to a good business mentor, Janelle and I. I'm going to put my hand up. We're really good at it because we've uh, helped business owners for so many years now. We will help you. Don't let it go to that crisis. If you feel as though you need to eat humble pie, eat the humble pie because I can guarantee you're going to be better off in the long run. And it's not a sign of failure when you come to a business mentor. In fact, it's a sign that you actually understand your value in the world and you want to create more value. So reach out for help. Don't be one of these small businesses that calls it quits. And again, these are just simple strategies that I've given you if you're a solid business owner and you're wanting solid results. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow.